Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I decided to do something completely different to my usual kind of videos and kind of focus more on like jobs, job searching, uh, being a graduate, all that kind of stuff. Um, so last week I did a very last minute video. If you've watched last week's video, then it was very last minute. Um, I had a very busy week and this video will kind of clear up why I had a busy week. So basically I had a couple of interviews last week. I had um, an assessment. I had like this whole long process and I guess I got a new job, um, which is just crazy to say because I've literally been applying since the day I, well, before I even left uni, I've been applying and um, the day I got the co-op job, I've literally been applying from that day as well. So I've not stopped applying literally since I started my third year of university um, and it's taken a very long time, but I finally, 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 finally can say that I've got a job, which is just insane to say. And I'm so excited. I'm very nervous as well. I just feel so like, it doesn't feel real yet. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just crazy. Um, but I know there, there's a lot of people that obviously graduated the same year as me. Um, a lot of people like my friends and, you know, people that I just know from school that have all kind of gone through the same thing and have come out of uni in kind of the middle of the pandemic, which is kind of the worst thing ever. Um, and it's been super difficult to find a job and I know it's been so hard. So I know that some people are having the same kind of problem. And I feel like the next year that comes out of university, so obviously if you're graduating this year, um, you're probably going to get the same sort of thing and the same kind of situation because obviously a lot of people have lost their jobs because of the first lockdown um, and you're kind of competing with not only like other graduates and you know graduates from the the last two years but also people that are like m a lot older and more experienced have like years and years of training in their fields and um, have like you know been made redundant or just are looking for another role so it's just super difficult it's honestly been an absolute nightmare but I thought I'd do a little video to kind of round up my experience and kind of like a few tips that I would recommend for anyone that is coming out of university or still looking for a job um, and I'm not going to say that these tips will 100% guarantee a job because it just doesn't work like that it's very much just I guess it's in a, in a way it's like just how lucky you get and um, you know you can do everything that you can to get something but at the end of the day if there is someone that they like more than you then it's most likely that they're going to hire that person which is just a sad reality of job searching um but yeah i am finally 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 employed in a proper like not not exactly in the field that i you know graduated in and i'll talk about this a bit later but um yeah i just it's just something you know um, so when I started my first year, I started applying straight away. Like I did so many graduate schemes, so many like graduate focused applications, um, mo mainly did graduate schemes because at the time that you kind of start your third year, the graduate schemes are kind of for like September and July and not like straight away. Whereas most jobs obviously that you apply to that aren't graduate related, um, want someone to be hired straight away. They're not really looking for like someone in nine months time or when you finish your degree. Um, so yeah, when I first obviously did apply, it was pretty much all graduate schemes and graduate schemes themselves are so difficult to get, like just ridiculously hard to get. Obviously it helps, but helps more if you've got like a really good grade or if you've got, you know, placement experience or something like that. Um, but generally I feel like the application process and just trying to secure a graduate scheme is just literally impossible. Um, so if you do get one of those and you are ridiculously lucky and you probably went to an amazing university and have like, you know, something amazing about you not like if you don't have a graduate scheme that you're not amazing you are um but yeah so I applied to loads of graduate schemes I actually applied to one that I wanted so badly I applied to the MI5 um I don't know if I'm allowed to say that now I think I am I, I mean it was it was over a year ago so I'm guessing I am but um yeah I applied to MI5 I wanted it so badly I was so excited I couldn't tell anyone obviously so it was really difficult like I could tell my close family at like my mum and dad and stuff but you can't really tell anyone that you're applying to the MI5 when you are um so I really badly wanted that and obviously I didn't get it um and I was like so upset because that was like one of my first rejections and I had I known I had so many more coming oh my god I would have probably just been like whatever um but because I wanted that one so badly it was a bit more a bit more bitter when it happened um so anyway fast forward to you know just about to leave university is when I started applying to jobs that kind of weren't in graduate schemes and were just like normal office based jobs and I wish that I'd kept a tally of how many jobs I'd applied to since I kind of st started looking because I reckon I've probably done over a thousand like not even joking I think I've I think I've passed a thousand which is just insane like that's crazy to think but um 
yeah, and most of them I haven't actually had like even interviews back. I think I've had like four interviews maybe or something like that. And you know, some of the roles have been like absolutely ridiculous that I just don't even want anyway. Um, but I've just applied for two for the sake of it. And there was po points at like, you know, when I was doing job searching where I just thought, oh, I'll just apply to it. Like at least it's something, at least I'm kind of earning something. Um, but kind of thinking about it more and more, I was like, you know what, this is not the role for me. And there is no point applying for things that you really don't want to do because you're just going to end up really miserable and really upset and really sad. Um, so I really would not recommend just applying to things for the sake of it. Um, obviously you would, I'd say like broaden your horizon. So obviously when I first started applying when I got out of uni, um, I was very much looking for um, things that were focused on my degree. So I did psychology with business. So I was looking for things that are like project management. I really wanted to do project management. Um, so I was looking for project management. I was looking for like HR, um, compliance, which is what my sister does. Um, I was kind of just looking for like actual roles that I really, really wanted. Um, and I just feel like it took a few months to kind of realise that maybe this is not the best way like maybe to just broaden my search because the way i was doing it where i was kind of like specifying what i wanted obviously it's good to do that but you kind of have to expect for the process to be that much longer and that much harder um because all of these roles actually nearly every single one wanted at least one year's experience in a similar position which i didn't have obviously because i'd come out of uni and um, i had some office space experience from like reception work and like just like freelance contracting um so I had some experience, but it wasn't enough for me to be like, yeah, I've got one year's experience in compliance or project management or stuff like that. Um, so I kind of then realised that, you know what, I need to like actually broaden my search. Um, and that's when I started adding things like social media interns. Um, social media obviously is a massive thing that I would love to do. So I broadened it to like social media, HR, compliance, project management, business consultancy. Um, and then I even uh, did it to like, you know, more kind of not easier roles to get but roles that require a lot less experience so admin roles um I touched on recruitment and then quickly realized I didn't want to do recruitment at all because my sister done it before and it's just not a good a good kind of industry to sort of be in if you're not good at it and it's not kind of what I would be good at um I literally just broadened it to anything and everything pretty much anything that was, it required me sitting at an office desk and you know getting a decent like starting salary <laughs> that was literally what I broadened it to um so that's like one thing I would say is that I know like when you come out of university you really want the job this obviously only applies if you've got like similar degree to me if you've got something completely different like media studies or I don't know something more creative then you're not going to want to be sitting in an office um but yeah I would say if you've got similar kind of you know background to as me and you've kind of done like something businessy related or you're looking to go in those kind of fields then I'd say definitely one major key thing is to not be so close-minded with your options just you know as a starting graduate you've got to realize that you might not get your dream career straight away and that you might not even be in the industry that you want to be in like further down the line but the main key is to just get as much experience as you can. Another thing I would say, which I think is already quite obvious, is don't expect to get a massive paycheck. I mean, yeah, you've got a degree and, you know, in school you get told, like, those with a degree will, on average, get a higher salary than those without a degree. Yeah, they might do, but it might not be straight away. It might be, like, in the future. Um, so don't expect to get a fat check at the end of the month or at the end of your whatever job you get. Don't expect it because it's probably not that likely. I mean, most graduates start on like a 20k salary and if that, sometimes they start lower, 18 to 19k, which is fine. Like, just go for the job rather than the pay. Like, don't focus loads on the pay. Obviously, don't go for like things that are ridiculously underpaid because then you're just wasting your time and, you know, you deserve to get a decent amount of money but don't like focus so much on your pay another tip that i think is just huge and something that i felt bad for at the start is taking regular breaks from applying so when i first came out of uni i applied for three four months like straight just kept applying literally would check my like indeed linkedin every single day and just make sure there's nothing new out that i'm missing um you know just applying 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 and i got to a point where i was so exhausted and drained and just sick of it and i just didn't want to do any more applications i was like you know what fuck this like i don't want to do this anymore i might have you know missed my dream opportunity but it's not good for your mental health like you need to have a break and you should not feel bad about having regular breaks with your job searching i think in the course of like eight months i've had like two quite long breaks where i've just been off for a whole month of even bothering to search 
um so don't feel bad for that and do that if you think that is what you need i would say like find your best kind of places for job searching so i would recommend mine as being uh indeed and linkedin i think was so good for me because i would literally just type in like the jobs i wanted um filter it to like uh, london my area i would filter it to like entry level um like how big of a radius i want from you know where i live um and yeah they had some really good jobs on there some really good companies um and a lot of the time i would see companies and then just go onto their website and like look and see on their careers page if they had any vacancies um and indeed in general it's quite good like i have it on my phone and i would just check like before i'm going to bed or something if there's anything new and just like save them so i could do them the next day um and i know a lot of people use like so many other places like total jobs and graduate jobs and there's so many but i'd say stick to like a few and just really really like you know focus on those major things with like using resources for your cvs and your cover letters i got my cv done by my careers team at uni um he was so good like he this guy that worked at the careers team basically just rewrote and restructured my cv and made it so much better um and he also was open to like you know doing all my cover letters or just finding like a template for me that i could just follow because your cover letters you have to literally change for every role which is just the longest thing ever honestly i wish that recruitment processes wasn't weren't this long but you know it is what it is a lot of people will be fine with application process but you might have difficulties with interview um now i had so basically the the role i applied for i had um a numeracy literacy and like background of the company assessment uh, which i had to do first before i even got an interview um then i got called for an interview this was all done through an agency by the way i didn't sign up to the agency but the advert on in on indeed was through an agency so the lady from the agency was kind of helping me with the application i had an, the first stage interview which was a zoom interview um it was so awkward because i couldn't see them but they could see me and hear me i could only hear them and the first interview there was probably three people in the room and one of the people in the first interview was the ceo which i didn't luckily know until after my interview otherwise i would have been literally shitting myself because oh, i just oh my god i would have just panicked um but the questions were difficult i'm not gonna lie and interview preparation is just a massive 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 key like you have to know your company you have to know the role you're applying for and you kind of got to know like the kind of questions they will ask you which are similar in most interviews like your strengths weaknesses you know like things that you've maybe not done good in the past or how you deal with like difficult co-worker at work or an example they always have an example of a situation where you've done this and you've done that and most of it needs to be focused on your work experience this is difficult because i don't know if you should be like this in all your interviews like i can't say but for some reason in both my interviews for this job i just was being really honest like i was very much myself like more than i've ever been and i got i think in the second interview i really connected with the people that i was talking to because i was so genuine about my answers like i kind of was almost like you what you see is what you get like this is you know this is me i've told you everything about me um and i was just really honest and i don't know if that works for every interview but i don't know it seemed to work for me and they seemed to really like that but i know like in the past i've had roles where i've had to kind of like tweak my answers and you know and i've been honest about some of them and they've not really liked that so i just think it's really difficult to to know what your company are looking for um and at the end of the day you kind of just gotta go with what you got go with it's really hard to give interview um interview like tips i think i think just know what you're talking about be confident in your answers and just don't panic because i was so nervous i'm not gonna lie youtube and doing this has helped me so much with interview experience because when i first started doing interviews after uni and like kind of preparing for interviews i was so nervous like i couldn't do it i would i would stutter and i would not know what to say and i'd be like um uh, like they'd ask me a question and i'm like um i don't know uh, i would literally have no answers and doing this has helped me so much and i'm not gonna lie in most of my interviews i have been you know like really edging the youtube on because i'm like you know it's helped me grow my confidence and it's you know good for this and good for this they love that i was a Krispy cream ambassador and like i really went for it like because i obviously this is not my job but i kind of like treat it as if it's really important and like those kind of things you know that's special that like, you've got to really like just put in there like anything that is good about you that you feel like is worth mentioning you should mention you know if you've got like a, an amazing talent or i don't know you're a musician or something amazing i feel like it's always worth putting that in there because there's so many skills that you can pick up from things that you just do another major tip is to just be patient which is like the most 
the hardest part of all of this is you know like not losing hope that you're not going to get something because it can get to a point where you're like you know what i'm never going to find anything no one's ever going to hire me but they will you just got to be really really patient there's going to be a company that is out there that is looking exactly for what you have and what you can bring to a company know that with time and with the more applications that you do that something will come along for you it just might take a ridiculously long amount of time um and you know what when i first came out of uni actually i didn't just apply for like you know graduate jobs i obviously applied for like retail and things i could do on the side which is why obviously i'm at co-op right now and and i would say that 100 percent. you know like it takes the pressure off knowing that you've got something else and you're still working and you're still making money because you know you've got to like you know you've got to get some money in to like fend for yourself while you're waiting to get a job um so i would say definitely like you know apply for retail apply for smaller jobs have something on the side don't just sit at home and wait and wait and wait till that dream job comes along at the start i was just so so hard on myself like i had so much pressure on my shoulders i was like oh my god i need to find something i need to find something and i'd rush applications and do them like not to a good standard um but now that i'm obviously was more relaxed and had another job i wasn't as like panicky about it i guess i think all around this is just the hardest time for a lot of people and honestly like don't feel like you're on your own because i feel like i feel your pain you know i feel you and there's so many of us in the same situation that all feel the exact same but if you are watching this and you're a graduate and you're in the same situation and you're feeling shit you know i'm always here for a chat i'm always here to give you some more hope because honestly it was the same for me and this is just one step in my career it's going to still be like a massive journey for me to get wherever i want to be do not lose hope like i'm being serious like do not give up you will get the job that you want something is out there for you speak that shit into existence it's coming you've got something coming just don't panic because i am the most panicking per panicky panicking i'm the most panicky person ever i'm like the kind of person that is shitting herself about 10 and 23 even though that's not old um so you know what if you i guarantee if you're panicking i have out panicked you i also wanted to quickly say that i so i start my new job after i finish my notice period at co-op which is about four weeks now <laughs> i don't know how it's gonna work because obviously the new job is a nine to five thirty four five days a week um and i film during the week i'm really nervous about that that's actually one thing that was really like I was it was a bittersweet moment because obviously I was really happy but in the back of my mind I was like oh my YouTube is gonna take a massive hit from this um which obviously is fine but I don't actually like work from home I've got to travel quite a bit to uh the new office so yeah I don't know how it's gonna work it's gonna be a bit of a bumpy ride until I kind of figure out when I'm gonna film and upload and stuff but I'm gonna try my best to stay as consistent as possible and not let the YouTube fail um, just the first few weeks might be a bit crazy so I will let you know if there's going to be videos in those weeks but I don't know we'll see what happens I guess that is a little life update slash my graduate interview application tips um, but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, yeah don't forget to subscribe to the channel don't forget to follow me on Instagram and my other socials so I will see you guys again next week with more videos bye Believe in no shame, my eyes on the game, they're calling my name, I ain't what I claim oh. I don't look pretty yet yeah, with him, I don't need to bleach my skin Soaking in the melanin, I'm desirable within